Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be doing a tutorial to carve up one of these bad boys right here. Scrap wood. A scrap wood piece that we hope to get maybe 50 bucks for. Should be fun. Should push our level. Should push our skill. This is the piece I'm going to do it out of for you guys. Walk you through. We're going to do two camera angles. One right here on this chainsaw. And the one in my hand is going to go on the power tools, all right? Do a voiceover. Walk you through the best that I can. Now, a lot of this piece is going to be up to you, your artisticness, the ability that you have learned this far. All right, guys, this is a creative piece. So let's be real. You've got to you've got to put in the effort, you know, give it a go. It might not come out perfect the first time, but practice makes better. I don't want to say perfect because we're never perfect, but you can do the best that you can and uh, give it a go. If you try this piece and you want to share it, you guys can on Facebook, Kyle Hall Woodworker, New Carvers. You guys go there, answer the questions, every question there is, and I will let you in the group and you can share your work. Now, last week, I carved up some little bears like this, all right? I still haven't painted that guy, I need to. That was a tutorial. If you missed it, link up above, you guys can go back, check that out. Another thing, we're gonna be carving today with the MS200 with a 14 inch bar. If you guys have a 170, that's fine, the bar and chain sizes are the same. Although, the 170 is running a 16 inch, this is running a 14 inch bar, but the chains are still 43 gauge. The nose of the bar is still basically the same. So, you know, whatever you have, use. Jaw horse, gonna need a jaw horse, guys. If you do not have this set up with the blocks in here yet to protect your jaw horse and protect your piece, protect yourself from hitting the metal, then look up above, there's a link. Go watch this video and show you how to set yourself up with that. What else are we gonna need? We're gonna need a torch of some kind. Even these work, one pounders. You're gonna need some spray paint, some colors, paint in a can. What colors, hang on, what colors do you want, right? These are two different blues and a white, a gray, and a straight green. And then the outer edge is burnt, okay? Give you guys a little bit of an idea. Back over here. We will also need a die grinder, all right? Quarter inch shaft, green flame, coarse bit from saber tooth tools it's usually green but i've used it a lot guys use link or use code hall 10 capital h a l l 10 when you go to sabertooth.com i think you can get a discount if it's still working check it out what else what else what else what else possibly this eye eye cutter bit from saber tooth coarse green eighth inch shaft in my dremel okay we're also going to use a flap sander in our drill and I'll probably forget something because it's usually the way it goes. Oh, yeah, safety gear, chaps, boots. I will be wearing gloves, ear protection, dust mask, all that great stuff. Uh, let's get started. Just kidding. Guys, really, big shout out to all my members. Seriously, appreciate you guys. You, you support me. You support my channel directly. It means a lot. For those of you that buy merch, thanks a lot. We got merch, Kyle Hall Woodworker, in the store tab big truck driving by if you're here because you're like i love chainsaw art i don't even want to carve but i'd love to buy some of your pieces check out the etsy link down below in the description guys there's all kinds of links to tools like these or similar in the description down below right the tool links and all that are in amazon and if you want to buy my work that's through etsy i also have some ball caps uh in etsy that you guys can purchase they say call hall woodworker those are there they are very limited but if they sell out maybe we'll make some more and yeah let's start making some sawdust <laughs> all right guys welcome welcome so this piece might be a little difficult but that's all right we're gonna give it a go start by creating some lines we're only going about a quarter of an inch deep these are gonna outline the work we're gonna do on the inside. Okay, so this is giving us like a picture frame, basically. Now, each one of these is gonna look different depending on how thick your piece is, how much room you give yourself, whether there's a tree knot or a branch and you wanna to try to save it. All that I'm trying to do, honestly, is give you what I can for a tutorial, but inspire you to give this piece a go. Just give it a try and uh, however it turns out, it turns out. You know, after you make your trim line, go ahead and start cutting in that moon. Do your best, kind of make a circle. We're only cutting in about a quarter to a half an inch at the moment. You know, we want to just sort of block it out. Even if it's kind of square, it's all right. We'll clean it up later with power tools. Just take your time and, you know, cut it in. 
So we're going to trim this piece down. It's about two and a half, I think it's about three inches thick actually. So I'm going to cut in a little deeper above the moon in that top line and make a straight cut down across the front. Now I don't want to remove the entire piece all the way to the bottom, just to the cut line that I made. What this is going to do is give us a real three-dimensional look for our moon in the tree we're going to put in it. It'll help separate it and have it kind of stick out, you know, past the frame of the piece. When creating something like this, guys, use your imagination um, and just, just go for it. You know, try to think about it. Think about your cuts. Think about the look you want. Go slow and, uh, you know, be deliberate about the cuts you're making you know think them over due to the way this piece is oriented with the thickness on the left the thinness on the right i've decided to put the tree on the left hand side instead of the right hand side like the cover photo so i'm doing a full plunge cut we went all the way through the piece right here and what i want to remove is this upper portion so i'm cutting next to the moon not touching it you know just a little bit off the moon we're going to plunge cut all the way through we're going to remove this triangle we've kind of uh, created here so we'll have this void the point is to have voids spaces gaps to look through and see the wall behind it or whatever you're hanging it on now it is important though to kind of think about these cuts right these aren't just pointless because we don't want to take away too much you know from where the top of the tree would be in the top of our mountains we're thinking about the layout now i did try to draw this on with a crayon but due to uh, the wood being pretty wet still having a lot of moisture the crayon just won't draw on that dark colored wood so if you sand it off dry it out you could do that um for me though you know i'm i'm Trying to make a piece I can sell and I'm not taking a ton of time and, you know, <laughs> you guys can though. Take your time, dry it out, sand it down, draw your piece out. So all I'm doing here is using the nose of the bar in a scraping motion. We're kind of rounding the moon off. It doesn't have to be perfect, all right? We're getting the thing close to the shape that we want because when we come in with power tools, we can get a lot more detail and you know really refine the piece we're just trying to do all the heavy lifting that we can with the chainsaw now you might think oh this is impossible or ridiculous i might as well do the whole thing in power tools well if you do it with the saw though again you're working on technique chainsaw control muscle control you know this is getting you built up and ready for bigger projects now i've decided the piece is still too thick in the front on the left where the tree is going to be. So we're going to cut down some and remove that again. This is, once again, this is going to help that tree look even more three-dimensional, sticking out past the picture frame, if, if you know we want to call it that. So hopefully you guys can kind of see it. You know, um, the tree is going to be right here on this side. So what I'm going to need to do at some point is remove some material from the side of the tree and kind of from the back. That's what we're doing here, making a cut down the back of the tree a little bit. So a lot of this is, is eyeball work. You guys got to, you know, go slow, think it out. You can see I'm stopping and thinking about my cuts. I know this video is kind of long, but it, it, it you know, I'm just trying to be real. We'll have some cuts. We'll have some high speed in here a little bit here and there. But I think it's important, you know, not everything is just, you know, grab your saw and go and just hammer it out. It just doesn't always work that way. So for me, a video like this is really tough to give you an exact cut by cut, you know, word for word. That's why I'm kind of just letting the video play slow and talking over it and giving you insight where I can. You guys, trying something new, something like this is really just have fun with it. Have fun with it and go for it. If you start stressing out about every little cut and every little thing, you're going to start stressing out and you're not going to have as much fun with it. Have fun with it. It's something new. Give it a go. You'll have scrap pieces from other carvings or trim a log down the side and create some of these, you know, trims 
or scrap cut pieces and you know try them these could end up being really good sellers in your area you could get really good at making them and with time with practice comes speed so the first bear the first owl the first tree the first wall hanger the first the first the first whatever it is should be slow should be thought out should be methodical you should be taking your time right after that you know the second still the same well, tenth might even be the same but after a while without even thinking about it you're going to go out there and you're going to knock a piece out like this in 15 20 minutes and be like whoa what happened that was that was fast i can do four or five of these in an hour and start making some money you know if that's your thing if it's a hobby don't worry about speed you know don't don't worry about how many can i get done in a day don't worry about that kind of stuff have fun and even if you're looking to sell these pieces the goal here is to have fun right disconnect from the crazy world we live in create some art that you are able to create or you are learning to create and have fun having fun is is key and you know when I was working my day job and doing this yeah I was still having fun carving but I was still feeling a lot of stress and now that I'm doing this full time I'll tell you it just I'm having fun with it you know I am I'm having fun I'm not making millions of dollars here but I am living a happier life and I'm having fun and the just I guess what I'm getting at you guys is just don't stress out about it you know just have fun with it also I want to apologize if I sound nasally um my allergies are really bothering me this morning it's about 6 30 in the morning while I'm doing this voiceover and I have my morning voice still as I like to call it <laughs> So due to that tree sticking out past the frame, I want to put these lines in the back or create tree limbs on the back side of the tree. You'll, you'll see why, you know, when we get to the end, but the tree sticks out past the frame, so you might as well carry those around. All right, and by now, most of you know how to create a tree, and if you don't, well, we have that Carving with Bob on Wednesday video that you guys can watch. I'll have it popping up right now up in the top corner. In that video, I'll show you guys how to create a tree with my buddy Bob, a.k.a. me, just saying. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the, the Carving with Bob on Wednesday video. We're going to start doing that a little more often, I think. I would love to have some feedback on it. Also, I, uh, I want to thank everyone who has joined the members membership part of my YouTube channel. Um, I think I have six or seven of you right now on the new tutorial tier, which is my highest level tier at $9.99 a month. You know, right now we're working toward um, being able to buy a new shoulder mount for the GoPro. So as you guys can see me kneeling right here, hopefully on that left shoulder, we'll have a mount with a GoPro and you guys will be able to have a different angle right there, chainsaw carving. And if we can get what was that? I think I said if we get 10 people at that tier, we'll get that mount. And the next one's huge, though. All right. If we can get about 50 people signed up under that new tutorial tier, 50 or 60, I think it was, at $9.99 a month, I want to buy a brand new GoPro. So we'll have three GoPros. And I'll try to do a video with a stagnant shot, one on the saw, and then one off my shoulder. Um, the reason, though, for the GoPro isn't just to have three views but one of my GoPros keeps acting up. The vibration from the saws and the power tools are just beating it up. And I'm going to have to replace it soon. And uh, yeah, I'm just giving you guys the opportunity to help make that purchase. So yeah, that's all. And if, if you know you can't do that tier, if you can't do that uh, membership or anything, that's fine. No worries. No big deal. I appreciate your view and your like. Give me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, that's, you know, that is good enough. So. so at the base of the tree there, if you just saw, I was talking through it. But we cut a spot straight through, which would be to the left of your tree trunk, just over to the trim part of the quote-unquote pitcher frame. 
trying to make hollow spots, right? Places where you can look through the piece and see the wall you're hanging it on. So here I'm kind of just thinking about the base of the tree cutting down. We're gonna have to change the line there on the bottom, I think, but that's okay. Now again, your piece will be different thicknesses, so it's kind of tough to say how deep to cut and all that in case your piece isn't three or four inches, your piece is only two when you're trying to do it. If your piece isn't three to four inches thick, at least on one end, it's gonna be a little bit tougher to get a lot of three-dimensional look. Your depths and your cuts will have to be a lot more shallow. All right, guys, hope you're hanging in there. If somebody actually watches this to the end, which I know a lot of you will, leave me a comment, let me know what you guys thought. Let me know you watched it to the end, all right? I love seeing that. And uh, if you guys want, comment where you're all from. I always love seeing where everybody's from that, you know, watches the videos. So we've moved the piece closer to the edge of the jawers. We've cut down and we've trimmed the fat back where I'm pointing is going to be our mountain. So we had to remove that material. And what this has done is allowed the tree to be in front of the mountain. Remember, we're thinking a three-dimensional piece. And we're carving a three-dimensional piece from a somewhat flat piece. So you've got to, you've really got to think about these cuts and think about how this is going to look. Now I'm separated. I have separated the moon from the top of where the mountain will be. And I kind of want to angle to the side, creating a little triangle in there. Now the thickness of your bar and the nose is all going to be, you know, is going to determine how big this triangle is on your piece. So just keep that in mind because the bar height will, you know, you can only go so small. If you have a dime tip bar, obviously you can use it, but I'm just kind of using that stock bar. All right, so there's a mountain. You could leave it, have just one mountain. I always like to try to put two in there. It just gives it a little more character. So the way to do that is start thinking about a line that's angled, you know what I mean? Like back, crisp, you know, like the top of mountains. Come on. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I'm still on my first cup of coffee. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're pretty, pretty far into this video, right? We got quite a bit of work done. We're shaping out our mountain here, making cuts. And I would like to add just a little sneak peek for this Wednesday's carving with Bob as he takes over my channel with his awesome hair and glasses and you know, slick blue shirt. We're gonna be uh, doing a fun tutorial and uh, you guys are gonna carve up a sunflower. We're gonna do a step-by-step -step sunflower next Wednesday, okay? So keep an eye out for that. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit all. Make sure YouTube notifications are on, okay guys? So you don't miss out on that. Because it's a, it's a fun one. Again, it is a scrap wood project. And, uh, well, Bob's going to walk you guys through it. And it should be a lot of fun. All right, so we're looking at our mountain again. Right here in the front, we want to trim this back a little bit more. So that's what I'm working on doing here. We're just kind of trimming the tree back. Kind of shaping out those mountains. Now, there is a big chunk there to the left, which will be below the tree branches and in front of the mountains, that triangle-ish shape. I had thought about doing two trees, but you know what? That starts to get super difficult. So we're gonna just uh, remove that chunk once we get these mountains rounded over and really, really free up that space so you can look past the tree and see your mountains. All right, here we go, making a plunge cut in front of the mountains, getting in to get that triangular-shaped piece out. Remember, leave some meat for your lower-hanging tree branches. Just take your time and trim, trim, small cuts. Just think it out, right? Think it through, kind of doing some tree branches as I go so I know how low they're going to hang, so I don't remove pieces that I actually wanted to keep. Right, so as you can see, kind of gonna have that tree come down and wrap around like that. Cutting in a little bit deeper to about the depth of where the mountains are. Now I gotta work on just kind of getting that chunk out of there. Sometimes you gotta trim things, you gotta trim that frame so you can get the saw in, you gotta play around with it guys, you know, think about it, think it through. 
So there you guys can see the depth. You can use the nose of the bar and kind of smooth it out, you know, get it back level with the mountains. You're able to remove those overcuts with the nose of the bar. You're kind of just doing this scraping motion, moving it side to side. It helps separate um, the tree from the mountains as well and round your pieces off. All right, guys, so just kicking it in high speed here real quick. All I'm going through and doing is scraping with the nose of the bar. This means I have to use less power tools and we're able to take away a little more material much quicker. We're trying to remove our overcut lines, rounding corners over that we want rounded over, shaping pieces back so we have a little more depth, rounding our moon, trimming our tree, that kind of stuff to get this that much closer to the look that you actually want, right? Something that you're trying to achieve. So right now you're just sort of using the saw as much as you can and you're fine tuning that piece, right? We're trying to make that a round ball. Just fine tune it. Take your time and fine tune it. All right, guys, so all that fine tuning is done. I just want you to see where we cut through, right? We left the trim, the tree sticks out, the mountains and all that, just giving you guys a nice close up look. All right, time to move into using that flame tip burr on the die grinder, going around our moon, kind of angling into the frame a little bit. This will help give the moon that rounded look like it rounds into the frame. Sort of want to get in here and round it and shape it. Now, sometimes you have to cut to the back because like as you look at the moon, you want to see the round. You don't want to see pieces from the back like sticking out past your round circle. So even if you have to like have it taper back more than the front, have a nice round look on the front and on the edge. And if the back has to be thinner, more narrow, then just clean it up. So this is what I mean by the back, this hard edge sticks out past my moon so all I'm doing is rounding it over on the back side and this will really help you know clean the piece up and uh, give it that real nice look so we're getting rid of this this doesn't need to be perfect you just don't want this to stick out past that front edge hopefully that makes sense so you guys understand what I'm trying to say all right guys back to the front let's put some craters in it using that flame burr push in move the whole thing around Use the edge of the burr to kind of go around the little indent you just made just a little bit, right? You're not going in super deep, but think about a crater with its walls and stuff sticking up. And then start making some more, going around them. And then what you do is you create a bunch of those, you know, however your layout is, whatever sizes you want. And then you start removing the material in between them. So the only thing sticking up are like the walls of that crater. As you guys can see, right? I'm kind of using the, yeah, I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> Removing that material, now that crater sticks up higher than the moon. You don't have to worry about distorting the shape of the ball because you've already created it, right? So the basic shape of the moon is there. So as you create the craters, you're just removing like that lower level so those craters stick out. Yeah, if you want to... So <laughs> I'm looking at this, right, as I go, and like, yeah, those craters are humongous, right? You don't see them that way. But that's okay. It's a piece of art. And it's the only way, honestly, to have it stick out, look more like the moon, in my opinion. I think the craters are a great touch, just a great little added feature. I even like to go around and just do a few indents like this and add to it. It's it, totally optional. You know, you guys could totally just skip this part. But to me, adding craters to any moon that you're carving, it just it shows that you took the time to add that much detail to the piece. So, I don't know. Have fun with it, you guys. You know, put a face in there if you want. Do the man in the moon. Do, do whatever you want. Put some craters. Leave it alone. Do a smiley face, do, you know, whatever makes you happy. All right, guys, so we're jumping in there, rounding over those mountains, just kind of cleaning up our overcuts and smoothing things out from the chainsaw. 
Now, I just wanted to talk about YouTube a little bit. I've got some new carvers that have asked me questions, and I know there's a lot of new carvers that want to make videos and uh, record and edit and create their own YouTube channel. And to be honest, I say go for it. Go for it. If that's how you want to express your art, do it. Like, do it and have fun with it. Have fun, right? Keyword there, have fun. I'm going to be up front, and I'll be honest with you. There is a lot of work that goes into creating videos, and there's not a lot of payoff. Like, you're not, like, I'm not making a lot of money on these videos. I've got 300, 400 videos, I think, on here, and I, I, I'm lucky. <laughs> I, I don't make enough money to cover the amount of work that actually goes into it. So you really need to enjoy making the videos and have fun making the videos and don't do it for the sole purpose that you're going to make a ton of bank because that's just realistically, at least for me and my channel, that's just not how it works. I don't make a ton of money. Um, people joining the memberships, obviously that helps a lot. Uh, some videos do pop off and do better than others. But, you know, like this video is I'm trying to get it down to about a half hour or so for you guys. It took me about 40, 50 minutes to record and carve. But now it's taken me about another two hour, no, about three hours of editing. I might even have three and a half hours worth of editing by the time this video is done and uploaded for you guys. That includes the thumbnail, the voiceover, uh, putting these two different shots together. So, you know, say three and a half hours worth of editing, we'll call it an hour to carve and film at least, and that doesn't even count setup. That's, you know, you're talking more like an hour and 20 to an hour and a half actually creating the video. So what are we up to? Almost five hours into this video. We'll call it, right, we'll call it four to five hours. So four to five hours worth of work to create this video. All right, real quick, side note, doing your trees, make sure you do this step of that flame bird, go through, round it off, undercuts, complete the cut lines from the chainsaw. So each branch goes up underneath the other branch. It'll give it a more realistic look and uh, they'll look more finished, okay? So I'm going up underneath, kind of finishing the cuts. That's what you want to do right there. So all in all, you know, it's some channels I realize pop off and have a lot of viewers and memberships. For me at the moment, you know, we're at like 12,000 subscribers, which is huge. And I am thankful for and is absolutely awesome. Don't take this the wrong way. I am not complaining in any way. I'm sure somebody will be a troll about it, but I'm not. I'm just being real because, like I said, a lot of people have been reaching out about videoing and creating their own channel. Just, you know, don't do it to try and get rich. Do it to have fun and to want to share what it is you're doing. Also, be prepared to have a thick skin because people are just, some people are ruthless, some people are not nice. And it's just, that's the truth. So, <laughs> is what it is but you know the money aspect I'm I'm thinking I make about maybe one cent one cent one penny for every 10 to 20 views maybe if that sometimes it's a fraction of a cent you don't even get one full cent so like you don't even make a penny per view it's got to be like 10 to 20 views to make a penny. So just kind of keep that and, you know, <laughs> I know I've got a video of like 700,000 views, one video. But I didn't even, I don't even know how much I made on that. I did not make a lot of money on that, even with 700,000 views. It's crazy. But yeah, a lot of time goes into creating videos. And, uh, you know, if it's something you want to pursue, do it for fun. Do it for fun. That's, that's the key thing, guys. Just like carving this piece, have fun with it. And uh, take your time and have a good time. Once you've cleaned everything up, don't forget to throw your initials in the back. This is your artwork. All right? Even if you don't like it, somebody else might.
All right, guys, so kind of, yeah, having some issues with one of my GoPros, and this tutorial is getting a little bit long. So, I'm going to walk you guys through the finishing steps. There are, well, <coughs> two major things going on here. One, I also can't finish this piece right now because it needs to dry out. Very wet. I've hit it with the torch. I showed you guys that. It's just not burning, which means the paint is not going to sit well. Okay, it's not going to stick good. This piece was pretty dry. So, what does that mean? We can't finish it to paint, right? But I can still walk you through it by showing you this one. Take your green paint first and spray your trees. Try not to get tons of overspray over here. Once everything is burnt and you hit it with the flap sander, put your green paint on, okay? Blow it off real well so you don't end up with missing paint spots later when the sawdust falls out. Now your green paint's done, let it dry. Once the green is done, throw a rag over your tree, right? Throw a rag over your tree in your mountains and spray your moon blue. Let that dry, spray a little white, kind of play around with it, and you guys will get a kind of a neat colored moon. Let that dry. Now what you can do is lay the piece flat, drape a rag covering the green on your tree and your moon and spray gray on your mountains. Let that dry. All right, so you want everything to be fully dry before you touch it, before you do anything else. Now this next step, it is important for it all to be dry. You can either use the die grinder with the flame bit, right? Which will work, but can be a little tough in tight spots. Or you get out that eye cutter bit from Sabretooth that I was talking about in your Dremel. And all the overspray that ends up out here out here that's not on the moon go through and get close to the moon but don't hit it get close to it and trim all this out all right clean it all up so you see there's no paint over here there's no this was all green believe it or not and this was all gray but we went through and we carved it away once you're done with that you get your torch back out you do a light burn try not to hit your paint too much do a light burn light burn and reburn it giving you a nice trim so that's how you guys can finish this all right you guys then let everything dry again and you can spray it down with some exterior polyurethane i like to use minwax uh that works well you can spray it or brush it on all right guys so that's it i hope this video helped you guys out be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe all right i appreciate all my members listen i set some new goals in this video and in the last one that hopefully you guys will help me reach so we can get a new shoulder mounted camera so that you guys can be on my shoulder and on the saw while we're doing tutorials i think it'll work out well but you know it'd be great if uh you guys could help me purchase that the next big purchase as well that i think i mentioned in the last two videos is a new gopro that i'm gonna have to be getting because i'm having issues with one of them already we've had it for a little while it has seen negative degrees to out here in 95 degree heat with the sun pounding on it so we're probably breaking that thing down you know but it's about time to get a new one if you guys want to help with that i gave the details in the video on uh, what you guys can do and everybody that's going to help make those purchases i really really do appreciate it, it means a lot and you know what it's for you guys i'm not going to be benefiting off this other than uh upgrading my style of tutorials and uh helping you guys out so thank you hope you guys enjoyed the video check out some videos popping up and I'll see you guys next time.